Good evening, and welcome to CB8 Speaks. My name is Monica McCain-Sanchez. I'm a public member of Manhattan Community Board 8, and I'm your host for tonight's program. Community Board 8 comprises the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island, and the definition of the Upper East Side is from East 59th Street, the north side, to the south side of East 96th Street, and from the East River over to the east side of Fifth Avenue, of course, all of Roosevelt Island. Community boards are local representative bodies with 50 volunteers appointed by the borough president for each board. And these members are selected in consultation with the city council member who represents the district. Manhattan itself has 12 community boards, and these community boards are playing an advisory role in zoning and land use issues, a community planning, budget process, and the coordination of municipal services. And uh, under the city charter, it is, they are part of the city government, although we are not paid members. I'm actually a public member. If you want to learn more about the community board, you can visit our website, which is cb8m.com, and you'll see a lot of information there. And you can also look at the, the Manhattan Borough President's website, which is mbpo.org, about community boards in general and how to apply for them, for a position there. Tonight, we have as our guest Jackie Rudolph, who's our chairperson of Community Board 8, and she's beginning her third one-year term this month. Jackie has previously been on this program and a couple of times. Uh, she'd served as a co-chair of the Environment and Sanitation Committee, and of course, she was on this program almost exactly one year ago to talk about um, her experience as Community Board Chair and looking forward to the next year, which is what she's going to talk about tonight. Now, Jackie has... Um, uh, great credentials. She has an MBA from NYU Stern School of Business. She was a banker with Citibank, and then she had a 21-year career as manager of capital budgets with the Long Island Railroad, and she retired just a couple of years ago. Uh, she's now very, very active in her um, parish on the east side, which is St. Joseph's of Yorkville. And uh, during the, the last couple of years, she uh, earned a master's degree in parish ministry. And she has managed with all this to find time to work on a community board for more than 30 years, which is a feat in itself. It does require quite a lot of time for, for people to um, devote to the community board. And uh, as Manhattan Borough President Scott Stringer notes in his um, material for people looking for appointment to community board, it is a major investment of time, and that is no uh, exaggeration. I am only just a public member, and I know it does take a lot of time. So first, thank you for being back. Well, thank you. And thank you for me. all the time you've spent with Community Board, because it is a very, very important function. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, now, you've just completed two years as the chair. Right. And so we want to start ask, um, what do you view as the greatest successes over the last two years at the Community Board? Well, I think one of the biggest successes is just the Community Board being so involved in the education system and the Community Education District Committee and uh, realizing that you know a lot of our, a lot of the people in the community board have children. They paid a lot for their apartments, and they find out that their children are no longer zoned for the school they thought they were zoned for. It's become a big issue. We have a very good youth and education committee. I know you had them on here previously, on your show. Actually, that's going to be our next program. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. Well, I want to say too. Some much. of the members have been on the show, but that's next month's program. Okay. Well, they've done a great job. Yeah. And uh, still, you know, there's still a lot to be done because there's still students who find that it's difficult to get you know, into the school they want to get into. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's been a big issue. I also think um, to deal with the um, Esplanade, the East River Esplanade, Community Board 8 got a little disturbed when it found out that Community Board 6 had funding for its Esplanade to totally complete it. Because a lot of people think, well, you have one. Well, we do, but it's kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. So that was another good achievement to be able to get the elected officials to realize that our Esplanade really needs a lot of help, and we want it to be contiguous with Board 6s and with the rest of the Esplanade around the city of Manhattan. So that's another big issue that we got involved in. And do you know when start work is going to start on the Esplanade? Has they have they? I don't really know, but they'll start board. So we don't even have the funding to do ours mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, an issue uh, to do board sixes was that we had caissons, which we had in the river, and those were supposed to be removed when the East River, when the um, oh that highway there, the uh, 
the FDR? FDR, right, right. I don't drive, so. I do. All I right. do really well. When the FDR was, when they put an, an addition onto it so they could fix it, mm -hmm. the caissons were supposed to be removed and the road was supposed to be removed. So some people on the board felt very strongly that we should have removed the caissons, but then board six would not be able to do their part of the park, of the esplanade. So we finally agreed to keep them in, to agree to keep them in. And so uh, I think it will be a while before community board eight's repairs are made. But at least um, Community Board 6 will start, so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll follow soon after. Right, and it's it's uh, great how the board really brought it to the attention of the elected officials because um, it's it's a beautiful area, but you have to cross over the highway to get over there. Um, mm -hmm. But once you do, it's it's just magical. But, yeah, it, it's, it's gotten big cracks in it, and mm -hmm. it definitely yep, yep. a lot of work right. on it. Is there anything you wish could have been accomplished by the community board in the last two years? Well, I guess, again, I'd go back to the education, the youth and education. I wish that we would have it so that, you know, everyone knew at the beginning of the school year or when they moved into a building exactly what district they would belong to. Um, also, I wish that, um, you know, well, I, I guess that that's primarily the primarily thing that I think would would be have been better. It's been very and, rough on education. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I could say is that I wish that we could finally do something about the peddlers and the vendors, the legal pender, peddlers and vendors on all throughout our district. We we met in my first year. We had several meetings. We came up with several resolutions, and not a lot has changed. It seems like I don't know what we're going to ever do to get rid of the illegal peddlers and vendors. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a big problem. There's so many issues, so I would wish that that would go forward too. What do you think have been some key events um, in the community board, um, either at, at meetings or, or in the area itself, um, that do you think have been most significant? Well, I think there have been a lot of parks issues that have been very significant. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was the um, Greensboro Oval, in which there was a big fight amongst people who wanted the tennis bubble to be up all year and people who wanted to play baseball instead. You know, it's like New York is so commercial, and some people say so um, used to serving the high net worth individual. But there are a lot of people who said, but why not allow us to continue to play baseball in the summertime? So that was a big fight, and community board supported the baseball players, and we were able to win that. And we were able to get the uh, tennis bubble to close down and I think probably around June and stay down until October. Mm -hmm. well, I think one of the important arguments made by the community board that really struck me, since I'm not a board member, I'm, I'm uh, kind of tangential to that. I think one of the most important statements was that the community board has uh, always had a position to maintain p uh, open space wherever right. possible. Right, yes, yes, uh-huh, yes. And even though that's under the bridge and it's got a lot of ash and dirt, but it is an open area. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the community members who came to uh, testify at one of the hearings had mentioned that they practiced the New York City Marathon running around the oval mm -hmm. or, uh, under the bridge in, in that right. park area. Right, right, yeah. Because um, it's, not, it's not the hard pavement, so it's a good, good way to get some practice mm -hmm. in. Now, we have an area, we, I guess we need your crystal ball now. Okay. In the next year, what do you see as emerging issues that might come before the community board? I think education will still be a big issue. You know, we have rezoned the district. The community um, education committee has, council has rezoned, so we've got to make sure that everyone has a, a good school. Um, recently at a community board meeting, it was found. It was brought up to the attention of the community that there are a hundred new children born in this district every year. So that means there definitely is a need for a new school in the near future, certainly within four or five years' time, so that kindergarten and first graders can be, you know, accommodated. Mm -hmm. um, I think there'll always be issues. You know, being on the borough board, you get to listen to what other community boards are involved in. And one of the things that we, one of the problems that we don't have is we don't have big masses of land that have to be developed, like the Con Ed site in Board 6, like the overbuild in, you know, on the west side of town, like the uh, Columbia site uptown on the west side. 
So that we, we have a lot of issues like with how to preserve what we have. So therefore, Landmarks has a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. They will continue to have a lot of issues. And there will be a lot of fights in the community in terms of extending some of the landmark districts as opposed to people who don't want landmarking as opposed to people who do want to extend the districts. But I think that we probably are a board who spend a lot of time preserving what we have because we don't have those fights that other boards have with building with large tracts of land that still have to be developed. One thing that we can never have uh, one of these shows without bringing up is the Second Avenue subway. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, what are uh, some of the, the ongoing uh, important issues that um, the board is wrestling with right now? now? The effect on the businesses in Second Avenue, it has been a disastrous effect on them. And you can even see um, when the construction moves from one part of the street to the other, from the east side to the west side, how the, that other side opens up and, and the side that has the construction going on is all closed and you can hardly see the businesses. So that's an important issue. Another important issue is the size of the stations and where the stations are going to be located in, uh, in the Board 8. Well, it's all on Board 8, unfortunately. The whole subway system, all of 2nd Avenue currently being built will be all, Board 8 will be the only board that will be impacted. But there are um, stations on 86th Street, which are in front of a building. That's created a lawsuit by the members of the community, not the community board. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of how, why the station has to be there, why it can't be someplace else, the size of the stations, the size of the ancillary buildings, uh, that's created some of the biggest problems. And then just um, safety. How do we safely cross the street with this construction going on? There has been talk about urging the government to somehow suspend taxes and um, give them grants. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything current on that uh, that um, that you know of? Because the elected officials come and speak to us at the community board. Yeah, uh, I know that that proposal is still out there. I don't know that anything's been done. I'm sure everyone will say this is kind of a bad time to do that. Mm -hmm. And it would almost have to come from the government because I can't believe that the MTA could, you know, at all put that on their books. I mean, how could you put on the books tax abatements for other buildings? Not really a capital expense, so. That's really kind of sad because they are not, you know, I guess I'm expressing a personal opinion here that they won't have any, any tax reduction or tax abatement, but then you see them close, and so there's uh -huh. zero tax. Revenue. Right, right, yes, yes, yes. It is a big dilemma, and I, I do hope that it comes to pass that they can get some kind of tax abatement because they definitely need it. It's just, it must be horrible to be in a business and so hard these days to survive anyway, but then with all the burden of people not being able to get in your store, people afraid of crossing the street to get to your store. I mean, it doesn't look too inviting when you see all that construction being done right next to a building. And we've had experience with sidewalk cafes not being able to be in operation in some places where people have paid for the cafes because of the construction going on. So. I agree with you. I really do hope something can be done to at least abate their taxes to some extent. There's always a, a question about when is the expected completion date of this section. Um, mm -hmm. I think, what, 2018, is yes, it? Yes, I think that's the okay. current one, yes, yes. Okay, yes. Well, it's, it's, a it's a moving target. Right, yeah. right. Well, I tell you, I used to work for, as you said, an agency of the MTA, and so I know how difficult some of these projects are and mm -hmm. how difficult, how you know, there's this thing called, um, well, well, when just site conditions pop up that you never expected. Mm -hmm. And I think you see a lot of that in this neighborhood. Everyone really wants the subway, but nobody ever realized how difficult it would be to build one in a neighborhood, in a community that's already totally built up. Mm -hmm. and I think that causes delays and causes more, it to be more expensive as you, a delay is an expense. Mm -hmm. Moving over to another transportation topic, something that is apparently happier, um, more successful, is the select bus service. Right. Um, have uh, what is what's the feedback you've been getting for it? Because this is now the, they have now uh, semi express buses going up First Avenue and down Second Avenue. Right, right. I think most people have enjoyed it. I think they have some problems with getting the proper tickets out. Sometimes the ticket machines stick or. But I think they're working on that. And just like, you know, the Metro Carta, that was a problem a bit when it first came out. I think that once they get it fixed, it'll be a great thing. I myself realized with the uh, with the with uh, this new bus service that I must always go on 3rd, Lex, and Madison Avenue because I haven't 
had the opportunity to try it myself yet. Oh, you have to. Okay, I will. Is, have you heard anything about expansion of this? I mean, moving something similar to the to Third Avenue? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I really haven't. But I'm glad it is working out so well. And most people, I think, really do enjoy it. They just like the expressness of the mm -hmm. of the buses. I don't know if it's relieved any congestion on Lexington Avenue subway, but I know for myself, I take the subway far less because mm -hmm. it's right on Second Avenue, and I know I can. I can get to work reasonably quickly. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. and they they come very very fast. They they're doing a great job with that. So, um, that's uh, one of the happy developments. Now let's talk about another transportation topic. Kind of, I guess, somewhere in between Second Avenue Subway and Select Bus, a bike lane. A bike lane. Yeah. Yes. yes. And that's another um, controversy that comes to board before the community board constantly, doesn't right. it? Right. Yes, it does because. There are bikers who complain about the cars, and cars who complain about the bikers, and pedestrians who complain about the bikers, and one is saying, no, we do everything right, and the other is saying, no, 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 we do. It's your people that are, the bikers are getting in the way. No, no, it's the cars that are getting in the way. So unless you have a, a dedicated lane where, you know, actually have a wall up, I think it's always going to be difficult because it's just hard to to abide by that kind of, arbitrary line that's there that's not really a wall mm -hmm. but it's just an arbitrary line you're just supposed to be a good sport about it and be nice about it I think that's I think that's always going to be a hard thing to do what about control of the um, bike delivery guys um, you know uh, that, that's a big issue I mean, it's not big really bike lanes but it's in the bike realm right right yes uh, although all 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 uh, restaurants will tell you that they, they abide by all the laws. They follow all the laws that their bikers do not ride on the sidewalks. They do this and they do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't follow the laws, and it really is a big problem. Well, isn't that one of the criteria for uh, when someone is applying to Street Life for renewal of a, of a liquor mm -hmm. license? It is, it is. That they're supposed to uh, have their bike um, people follow certain criteria or certain rules. Yes, it definitely is. They're supposed to do that, but they don't always do it after they say they will. Mm -hmm. So that is a big issue. And now there are the, um, you know, the bikes that are motorized. So that creates another problem, too. You know, you would think, it, I, expectation, my expectation would have been that it would make it easier for them to uh, follow the traffic rules and, and um, stay on the street and drive as a car would. However, I've actually seen those motorized bikes make them faster on the sidewalks. Oh, really? Oh, no. How awful. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, the um, it's it's definitely for the Upper East Side. I, I don't know if any other area has as big a problem as, mm -hmm. as our area does. Um, now, um, something also staying in the street realm is the recent blizzard that we had um, just um, around the Christmas season, which um, every every community had a lot of problems, especially I heard Brooklyn and Queens, but I know right. in our area we, we did have a lot of problems. We have a lot of hospitals, a lot of ambulances had to get to the hospitals. Did the community board office get a lot of calls about um, problems with plowing or, tra or trash pickups? No, we didn't. You know, one of the reasons may be that, well, one, our phones weren't working right after the blizzard, so oh. that might be one of the reasons why we didn't get a lot of calls. But uh, the board office said they didn't get a lot of calls at all. So maybe that went to 311. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's what 311 is there for. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of uh, topics do, you, do does the board office get phone calls from? Because I know that there's a, a staff of three there. There are four, four now. Four now. And I know that there are always fielding a lot of calls. What's a typical call? that? Uh, that well, they, they get, get a lot on sidewalk cafes. A lot of transportation issues, like, mm. you know, our transportation committee is constantly hearing things about, you know, uh, no parking here, no left turn here, no right turn here. We're constantly asked by the community to put to put those signs up, to head to petition DOT or to do a resolution mm. to send to DOT to ask for those kind of things. I believe the board office gets a lot of calls on that. Um, you get a lot of general information calls, like, what agency do I go to if if I want to, I get this done. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So the board is actually the board office is actually helping the the citizens and businesses of the community board. Right. Too. It's yeah. not just it's not just residents, but but businesses who are operating can draw on the community board office to help guide right. them in, in doing um, uh, setting up their their 
businesses, I guess. One of the other big, big topics these days is the, the budget issues and crisis is a, is a word that is thrown around a little bit. Um, city certainly has a, a significant problem, and we have a new governor now, governor who's um, talking about addressing that. Um, is, you know, how has the, the budget problem, which has been going on for a couple of years now, how has that affected the community board and the community board office? Well, the uh, OMB, the city of New York, has several times slashed the budgets of the uh, board offices. Uh, the mayor has always restored them, but there's been a lot of effort on the part of uh, Scott Stringer and the borough board to kind of petition the mayor and petition city council to please support us. And city council usually is the ones who support us and restores our budget. Mm -hmm. But they have been slashed, and we really thought that we would have to face permanent cuts, but so far that's not been the case. So, Well, that's fortunate because they, certainly the board office is doing a lot of important work. Um, now, uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, people getting on the board and, and about your position. Now, um, there is, um, you know, I think you're at, you're at your final one-year term. Right. Right, because mm -hmm. you're yep. limited to three years. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the succession process for choosing a person uh, to be a board chair? Well, basically, you look for your first vice chair to follow the chair if they want to, and then you look for the second vice chair to for, follow that first vice chair. So, I mean, I think in our case, it would be good if it worked out that way, but it's up to the board to decide. Mm -hmm. And how are the vice chairs selected? Again, they apply for their positions the same way I apply for my position as chair. Mm -hmm. A committee is elected, and the committee then interviews all of the all the people who want to apply for positions, and they make a decision as to who they re recommend, what slate of officers they would like to recommend. Mm -hmm. People disagree with it, then there can be also a slate from the floor. Mm -hmm. And then there would be a competition and a vote on Usually the vote is, I think, in December. Mm -hmm. I think the committee selected in September. They make their choices in October. Maybe the vote is November, where they actually, where the board votes on who they'd like to be chair, first vice chair, second vice chair, and secretaries. Mm -hmm. And at the very beginning of the program, we mentioned that if somebody wants to um, be on the community board, mm -hmm. they apply um, and go to the Manhattan Borough President's website for application. Right and that they're appointed by the Manhattan Borough President. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess the uh, also the city council. Right. The city council members have, have some say right. in that matter, too. Yes, they do. It's, the Borough President actually elects about 50%, a little over 50%. And then the city council, in our case, Daniel Gorodnik and Jessica Lappin, will appoint about another 50%. Mm -hmm. And um, we really have very few openings. Uh, that's one reason I brought it up, because this is the, the month that people um, apply. So um, one thing that uh, everyone should be aware of is that there is a lot of training that goes on for um, commu for community board members. They don't just come and sit in meetings and listen um, and vote and, on pass resolutions, but they are also trained. Right, the borough president trains them. Right. We usually have an orientation meeting where we have all the committee chairs explain what committees we have so they can pick out their own committee they'd like to be a member of. Mm -hmm. The trainings are um, on conflicts of interest, um, ethics. There's an ethics every two years, I understand. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, I know I had um, I had received an email about some of the other trainings, for instance, learning about how the budget process works in New York right. City. Mm -hmm. So even as a public member, although I'm not obligated to go to some of those trainings, I could go just to learn a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the budget issue is a very special issue that the boards get involved in. Mm -hmm. We have a chance to prioritize the projects that we would like to be in the capital budget and the projects we'd like to be in the expense budget. Mm -hmm. So the board should really take a very big effort in terms of budget issues. Um, some of the other uh, topics we, we're going to touch on real briefly because we have a few minutes left is um, Roosevelt Island. Okay. We, which uh, we, we had one program once on, but we, we want to mention the tram reopened on Roosevelt Island that um, after it was taken down, it was closed for about a year, I believe? Yeah, it was closed to a year, yes, yes. We usually have one meeting of Community Board 8 at the Roosevelt Island every year. And this year we weren't able to do it because without the tram it would have been a little bit too complicated for everyone to just take the subway. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have it. 
But I'm sure the people on Roosevelt Island are just so happy that the tram is back. And it, it's faster, and uh, it has some unique um, technical features. And, and it, I think I think somebody had said it's the only um, uh, aerial tram of that sort is used for public transportation. Yeah, I'd the be room. surprised. Uh, yeah. Obviously, they're for pleasure. So this mm -hmm. is actually uh, public transit. So I want to thank you, Jackie. And uh, I know I have some other things we were going to, we wanted to talk about. Um, about Can I quickly history? say something? I Absolutely. forgot to mention that I really want to thank so much the Communications Committee with yourself and, and your husband, Will, and, and David Rosenstein, who have done so much mm -hmm. to make put these shows together and to bring CBA to the community at large by these shows. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, I want to also mention Ben Kalos, who ben Kalos. He revamped the CBAM website. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easier to navigate. You can see past episodes of this program right. um, and, uh, and see the calendar. So I encourage everyone to see uh, the website. So thank you, Jackie. And uh, thank we'll, you. Um, hopefully maybe we'll see you before the end of your term. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Martha.